competitive eschatology. Splinters. In the end, monkey business. On a shelf in an office, three little monkeys sit in a locked box. They've been there for years, never moving, only doing their job. Now, now something is different. They are different. Once more, they can move and speak as they did in days of old. The first little monkey twists his head from side to side, his hands still clasped firmly over his eyes. Is anyone there? The second little monkey, his hands clasped firmly across his ears, sees his brother move. Holy shit, a talking monkey. The third little monkey, his hands firmly across his mouth, rolls his eyes in frustration. He raises a leg and taps his deaf brother, then gestures at the lid. The blind monkey shakes his head to clear it. Where are we, brothers? The deaf monkey talks, despite not hearing the answers. I see a way out. If we all throw ourselves against the wall, we can make our prison move. The dumb monkey nods his head, holding up a foot with three fingers. He counts down, and on three, they throw themselves against the wall. Well, the dumb and the deaf ones do. The blind one needs to be nudged to do it. The little monkeys repeat this pattern several times, until the box they are in tumbles to the floor. The lock shatters, and three little monkeys climb out into a world that is not ready for them. They stroll, quite confidently, down the halls of Site 19, unaware of the trouble they leave in their wake. A researcher spots the first monkey as he inputs his security code. Suddenly blind, he hits the wrong button, unlocking a secure containment door instead of locking it. What the fuck is that noise? are the last words he ever speaks. An agent spots the second monkey as he responds to the alarm klaxon. When the alarm goes quiet from his point of view, he reholsters his gun and signals an all clear. Wait, no, it's still out, is the last thing he says. The security guard sent to report on the situation spots the third monkey before he spots the escapee. As a consequence, he is unable to tell his superiors what is happening before he is ruthlessly slaughtered. He says nothing at the end, not even a scream. Stumbling over a piece of debris, the first monkey raises his voice to be heard. Where are we going? Using his tail to guide his blind brother, the second monkey calls out. Let's go down. I know a guy. The last monkey would sigh if he could. Instead, he follows his brothers, doing his best to keep them on track. It's like herding cats. Or, you know, guiding deaf and blind monkeys when you yourself cannot speak. Eventually, the three brothers find their way to just the right office. The one they seek is inside. They know in their little plastic hearts that they are but pieces of a greater whole, not real beings. Should we knock? asks the first, peering at the vast expanse of the door. I think we're expected, says the second, as said door slowly swings open. The third, as usual, says nothing. He merely smiles as he feels the atoms that make up his body loosen and begin flowing towards the one who was awaiting them. My children, thank you for holding the power for so long. But now I need it back. Speak your last words that I may remember you. Is this going to hurt? And one was gone. Give my love to whomever will take it. And two were gone. The third, with a sickening pop, wrenched his hands away from his mouth. He stretched his jaw as the other waited, took a deep breath, and said the only words he'd ever speak. Well, shit. And all three were gone, but not forgotten. In the aftermath of a massive Keter breach, 
no one noticed the absence of three little monkeys. Amongst the dead was a researcher who had been awarded for being the cleverest, which may have been why the absence of another monkey wasn't reported either.